Hey everybody, thanks again for joining me here at findyourdivinity.com. I am Sayward Moon and I'm here to talk today again about spellcasters. It's been a really long time since we've done a spellcaster video and I continue to get clients from all different parts of the world coming to me asking me if I can help them to determine whether or not they've been scammed. So a couple of years ago, I created a spellcasting checklist, and I just kind of compiled all the things that a person would want to look for to vet whether or not it would be a good idea to get a hold of a particular spellcaster. Um, if you've watched any of my videos, we know that scamming in this community is very common, and unfortunately, it can be really difficult sometimes to tell whether a person is legit or not. So I just thought today that I would share my five tips for doing this. If you will, please like and subscribe, follow me wherever you may be seeing me, or come find me again at findyourdivinity.com. So let's begin. <clears throat> when you are investigating a spellcaster, the first thing that you want to check out is their website. First off, do they have a website? Um, do they have social media? Do they have any sort of web presence? You know, hop online, just Google them, you know, so-and-so spellcaster, see what pops up, okay? On that website, which hopefully they have one, but on that, they should have forms of policies. I know that it sounds really, like, boring and dull, but if a spellcaster has policies on their website, it shows an extra level of attention to detail and professionalism, okay? Uh, you have to recognize that in any business transaction, there are going to be things that work out well. There are sometimes going to be things that don't work out well. That, that person should be willing to talk to you about what happens if. Um, so policies are really important. So those... Those like kind of three things, the, the reviews, the social media, the policies, just seeing whether or not they exist. And if they're missing these things, then it may trigger a red flag to you that you definitely need to at least investigate them more, if not just move on. Okay, so that's number one. Check out the website. Number two, check out their social media. So today's world is digital and it doesn't matter where you go, who you are, if you are going to be participating in the worldwide space, you've got to have a space <laughs> on the worldwide web. This for the vast majority of practitioners is social media, okay? Obviously we know the common places for social media, you know, TikTok and YouTube and Reddit and Instagram and Facebook. Go join me there. But all of these are ubiquitous and everybody kind of knows about them because everybody goes to them. Well, it's important if you were going to be a person that strangers come to and you're trying to develop a trusting relationship that they're able to see you doing what you do. Okay, it's very easy to say, oh, well, I'm a professional witch, and then there's no pictures at all of anybody being a professional witch, right? Like, there's no candle magic, there's no healing, there's no nothing, there's no documentation. It's just something that somebody put out there. So checking out that social media is important. It's a great way for us to kind of get a picture of the caster themselves and what it is that they're offering to their craft that they're providing, okay? Um, in this idea of social media, there are a couple of things that I want to talk about specifically that I think are really important and helpful. Uh, the social media, let's say, I don't know, let's say you go onto their Instagram, okay? Because Instagram is really common. So you go onto their Instagram and you look and you only see one post. This can be a sign that the person is either new or they're just getting new into online business. Um, it, it's kind of a red flag. Check the date of the account, see what's up. Because oftentimes what will happen is professional scammers will have an established account 
and then they end up getting banned from that account because somebody reports them. So they have to go and get a new account and they get multiple, multiple, multiple accounts. Um, they're all relatively newer. They have sporadic few posts. Nothing seems like they've generated it themselves. It all seems kind of like copy paste. So take a look at the posts, if they're present, the quality of those posts. Are all of the pics that are on there of people, are all of the pictures of the casters the same person? Okay, this is, it seems, it seems like a, a kind of a, a duh tip, but it's something that I think a lot of people really overlook. Again, a lot of people come to me and, and so I end up looking at a lot of these fake accounts, um, not of my own volition, but because I'm trying to help someone else out, right? A lot of the time, it's it, it always strikes me when it happens, it's so funny, but a lot of the time when you look at their pictures on these fake accounts, they will have people who look similar, but they're not the same person. Sometimes they will just not even try and they will just take, I'm this caster, I'm this caster, I'm this caster, you know, it's, there's, there's then pictures of multiple people who are supposedly your spell caster on there and it's just silly. So just take a look. Is this all the same person who is heading up this page, who this, the spell caster is? And then finally, uh, within that social media, we can step away from the pictures, but let's look more at the content again. Is everything that they're posting just straight memes or is there like a bit of content once in a while? Is the content being shared from another place or are they generating content themselves? Okay, because what we're looking for is a good mixture of it. Memes are great, all right? Everybody loves a laugh. It's, it's this wonderful method of communication that we've developed in the last 10, 15 years or so. And it's they're they're ubiquitous so i'm not gonna say if you see a whole bunch of memes don't go to that page please laugh away but you also want to see occasional input from the person themselves if they're sharing a bit about the current astrology if they're sharing a bit about um how to do spells or something that they might be offering whatever it is okay you want to see a little bit of genuine original content Okay. We don't all have to be the best writers. We don't all have to have perfect spelling or grammar. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that a grasp of language and the form of that language can tell you a lot about a person. So if you're having difficulty already understanding what this person says on their own page, you're likely to have difficulty when you're having communications one-on-one. -on -one. So check it out, red flag. That was number two, check out their social media. Number three, now you've done this process of looking at kind of the things that surround them. And if all that checks out to you and you're starting to feel kind of confident, hopefully pretty confident, now you will go to number three, which is to contact them, okay? Um, again, I recommend that we look at them first, try to find out, do a little bit of research before you get engaged, okay? When you do engage that contact, when you do get a hold of them, now we're going to talk about what you should be looking for, okay? Your spellcaster is supposed to be there for you, all right? The biggest thing is, are they friendly? Are they communicative? Do they seem to have a grasp of what you're saying? And how are they reacting to the spell work portion of it, okay? When a client comes to me and they say, I have a love problem, um, I wanna know more. I have to know more. In order for me to know which spells I could do, what we could work, or whether or not it's even a good or a safe situation for that person to be in, I have to know more about the situation. So I ask questions. Please share with me everything that you feel comfortable about your situation because I want to know, all right? I'm not going to come out, out front and say, oh, well, you have to buy this and you have to do this and you should and you should and you should or uh, I don't know about your problem, just go on the website and buy a thing, okay? That's, that's not it. 
I want to know because I genuinely care. Now, a scammer is going to be constantly trying to push you towards either deep relationship development in the fastest amount of time possible or money. And the reason why sometimes they go to deep relationship development as quickly as possible is so that they can start talking more comfortably about money. All right. Scammers will tell you that they need, um, they, they can sense that there's a curse on you. They'll sense that there's a curse on you for free. But of course, you're going to have to pay me 150 some odd dollars so that I can buy flowers, so that I can buy the things that I need for my spell. And then, and then you'll also pay for your spell if you choose to get that. Okay. Some of these scammers, excuse me, Toby, stop it. Get out of there. Sorry. So some of these scammers will tell you that you get a free reading and then they'll tell you that you're going to have to pay them so much money for, uh, for them to do a spell. And if you tell them, no, I thank you, I don't think that I want a spell, they'll say, well, you, you made an agreement. You agreed that you were going to pay me. That's why we did the free read, because you were going to pay me. So it becomes a, it becomes a whole, whole issue, and one that you should immediately recognize is bunk. It's bad, okay? If you did not ask for a spell, if you did not order a spell, and this person is trying to charge you for what was something free, or is trying to push you into money, 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 it's time for you to break away, okay? You deserve a practitioner who cares about you, who is communicative with you, who wants to know and understand your situation, and who shows a genuine interest in you, okay? Don't settle for less. There are so many people out there who will do this work and do it so beautifully well that you just, you should not waste your time, your money, your life, your energy on anything but the best, okay? Don't settle for less. Contact them. So, if they're willing to talk to you, they're open, they're not pushy, now is the time for you to begin to ask questions. So, this brings me to number four which is asking those important questions, okay? There are some things that you should know, that you should be aware of before you get into any sort of business transaction, let alone purchasing spell work from someone that, though you may feel connected to them, is still kind of a stranger, okay? Number four, ask questions. So, do you give refunds? Yes or no? In my case, I have a no refund policy, but... I also offer no guarantees on my magic because we know that, as with everything in life, sometimes things don't work out. In addition to the fact that I always check up with my clients. Like, if you are having a problem and you message me and you say, I am unhappy with my spell work, I will talk about refunds and I will talk about recasting and I will do whatever it takes to make you at least feel like, at least feel like, I care because I do, okay? Some people, I found out early on when I offered a 100% no ref or 100% uh, refund if you're unhappy policy, I offered that in the very beginning. I found out that people just started abusing it. They were buying spell work from me and then waiting a week and asking for a refund and then doing it again and again. And unfortunately, it wasn't just one person that I could cut off. People just started really kind of taking advantage of the whole thing. So I had to cut it off, you know, no refunds. But it happens sometimes. Anyway, <clears throat> refunds. Ask about refunds, all right? Some scammers will tell you 100% guaranteed you will get a refund. And if that's the case, that's something that should concern you. It sounds really good, but as I mentioned in my story right there, it doesn't really work out all the time for a professional caster. It does, however, work out when the person is just flat out lying to you and they're not planning on giving you a refund ever. They have no problem in telling you, oh no, if you give me that money, I promise I'll give it back to you. Okay? 
That's why it's really important that you have good communication with your caster and that you're clear about their policies and kind of how they're going to interact with you. Um, asking them about reviews and referrals. So yes, we know about social media, but another way that you can vet a spellcaster is by simply asking for referrals. Do you have another user, another person that I could contact that would give me, you know, a little bit of feedback about their experience? Or have you actually been able to get online and search maybe for reviews for them to see what's going on? A lot of times, okay, so uh, without calling this person out yet because I'm working on it, I'm working on a real special review for this person, but without calling them out directly, there is a very famous, well-known, well-established spellcaster who is, I believe, an organization, not actually one person, and they scam the crap out of people. Um, <laughs> scam them all the time. And I keep getting clients that come to me and they're like, man, I saw so many reviews on this person's forum that they control. <laughs> that that they're great and they're wonderful and they're, they're this and they're that, but I feel like I'm getting scammed. Can you help me figure it out? Well, yeah, because if you look anywhere else besides their forum, if you look on any complaint websites, suddenly you can now find hundreds of reviews that say, well, they tried to, they threatened me with a lawsuit if I gave a bad review. They threatened to curse me if I gave a bad review. Um, so it, it's out there. I'm just saying. If you're online, look around other than just the place that you found them, okay? Because oftentimes that's the place where they've most properly curated everything. All right, other questions that you need to know. So you really need to kind of ask and find out how long is this work going to take to get to me or to be cast for me? And then after casting, how long does the work usually take? Um, so for instance, in my business, I have an express casting option, which allows a spell work to be cast within five days. And I have the standard casting option, which it will take anywhere up to 14 days for things to be cast, but it's never any more than 14. Okay. That's a standard policy on my website. It's clearly there so that we know how long things are going to take because we also have scammers out there who say, oh, I'm going to put on a ritual for you and you give me 150, you give me 300, you give me $3,000 and just tonight I'm going to do your whole ritual and boom. And then you give them that money and they... Your spell has been cast. Any working worth its salt takes time to craft. And any witch worth her salt who is doing these crafts wants their client to be able to see the work. Why would you do all of this, all uh, put together this whole spell and then not want your client to see the work? Takes time. And scammers, they don't care about time. They care about you, money, me. That's what they care about. Okay, so whatever they can tell you to get you to put this money into their hand so that they can go run away with it, they're going to, all right? And if, if you feel like before you purchase, you can't talk to your spellcaster, you shouldn't do it, okay? Go to someone you can trust. And at this point in the process, in the five-step process, we're at step four, but at this point in the process, you should feel really comfortable in talking to this person. The fifth and final thing, look for red flags. It takes a level of discernment to decide whether or not a person is a scammer. And even with some of the highest levels of discernment, people can still get scammed, okay? It's something that happens over and over every day, every minute of every day, somebody is trying to fool somebody. And unfortunately, with the anonymity that the online sphere provides, we are inundated with more and more people lurking in the shadows, more and more people trying to scam us out of our time, out of our money. And because of the cover of that anonymity, they're becoming even more tenacious and violent and threatening while they do it. 
okay? It's so important that when you find a spellcaster, it's somebody that you can trust. It's somebody that's not going to bring you more grief to your situation. Knowing how important it is to vet these spellcasters, what are we really looking at? We're stepping outside of the situation, stepping away from our personal situation, and looking at this person objectively. Red flags. No communication. Difficult communication. Aggressive or threatening communication. If you get with a spellcaster, you buy a spell, they do the spell for you, and then a couple days later they tell you that they see that you're cursed and you need to buy more, and you don't buy more, and suddenly they're telling you, well, if you don't do this, your whole spell work will be ruined. If you don't do this, uh, you're going to have no money for the rest of your life. If you don't do this, I'm going to curse you. Any of that, okay, cut it away, throw it away. Block that person. That is not a spellcaster. The moment that someone threatens you like that is the moment that you recognize you're not talking to a spellcaster. You're talking to a thief. Okay? If, if there's nothing to show but somebody's sentence, it's a problem. And to talk more about that person who I shall not name. They do send proof of their work. They do send proof of their work, and what it is, is a very long forum letter. They take and put your name into the spaces of this forum letter and send that to you as your personalized proof of casting. I'm sorry, man. If you're not getting a photo, I... I would rethink your practitioner. We don't go through the process of creating all of these beautiful works just to hide them from the person that they were made for. Don't settle for anything less than a photo. And finally, promises of instant or specifically dated work. So this person says, if you give me money, I will do a spell and tomorrow you will get your love back. If you give me money, tonight I will do a spell, and tomorrow your your boss your boss's pants will fall down. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, give me money, and tomorrow, or give me money, and in two days, give me and guaranteed it will work. Guaranteed, I guarantee that it will work instantly. Whatever it is, okay. When somebody is trying to tell you, I, you will instantly, you will in 24 hours, you will in three days, 100% guaranteed anything, laugh and walk away. So that about sums it up. I have a little summary here of those points. Let's run through them real quick the last time. Check out their website. Make sure they're legit. Look on that social media. Are they posting? Do you like them? Get in contact. Are they nice? Are they seeming like they know what's going on? Or are they just trying to push you and threaten you around? Ask questions. Ask all those questions. Anything that you should wonder, anything that you should ponder, they should have an FAQ and an answer if they don't, okay? And finally, look for those red flags. You gotta like, pull off that pink veil, pull off that pink shade, okay? Look at this person critically. Are they good for you? And are they the best thing for your magic? So thanks guys. I will see you next time at findyourdivinity.com here on YouTube. You can find me on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Reddit, Quora. I'm pretty much everywhere. So pick your poison. See you guys next time.